Examine the wrist while the patient is seated with the hand resting palm up on the exam table and the arm exposed to the elbow. The wrist is the area between the distal radius and ulna and the base of the metacarpal bones. Note important anatomic landmarks, including the radial styloid, ulnar styloid, and the lister tubercle, which is just ulnar to the radial styloid. Inspect the dorsal and volar aspect of the wrist for gross deformity, redness, and swelling, including focal swelling from a ganglionic cyst. Gently feel the wrist for warmth and to detect subtle swelling. Compare your findings to the unaffected side if necessary. Then palpate for tenderness over the bones, the joint, and then soft tissues. Be sure to palpate the anatomic snuff box. Tenderness here suggests a scaphoid injury. The anatomic snuff box is best shown by having the patient extend the thumb like a hitchhiker. The snuff box is an indentation located between the extensor pollicis longus on the ulnar side and the abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis on the radial side. Have the patient move the wrist through a complete range of motion, including extension and flexion, and radial and ulnar deviation. Extension and flexion can be compared bilaterally by having the patient put her elbow up first with the palms together and then with the backs of the hands together. If patient's symptoms permit, do provocative testing for tendinopathy and ligamentous laxity. The Finkelstein test looks for de Quervain syndrome, which is tenosynovitis of the first extensor compartment. Have the patient make a fist with the thumb inside the fingers and then apply gentle ulnar deviation. Assess stability of the distal radial ulnar articulation by grasping the distal ulna with the fingers of one hand and the distal radius with the other and pulling up and down. 